Hello everyone, my name is Chelsea Bell. Um, I am the co-founder of Kubox Wine Club and also the events and marketing director for Gordon's Wine. I'm excited to be with you all today to chat about March, March's Kubox, um, which is called the Classics through Neil Rosenthal. And for this month's um, Kubox Wine Club, we decided to play upon the theme of the classics, um, which we discuss a little bit more in, in February's Kubox. Um, and decided to kind of take that theme and um, go on forward with it through the lens of Neil Rosenthal, the importer. So Neil Rosenthal is an importer that we love to work with at Gordon's um, because his wines really embody wines that reflect a sense of place. And the word classic is I think sometimes quite funny because of the fact that it can mean many different things to many different people, but classic does not mean to mean boring. Um, and today we really wanted to explore classic as a sensibility and really focus on classic wines as being wines that not necessarily um, come from the most classic areas in the world. While we have Burgundy and Bordeaux today, we also have a wine from Calabria and a wine from Loire, which may be a little lesser well-known, but they still are classic in the sense that the grapes um, that are being grown there are classic to the area and they reflect kind of the classic soils, the um, cultural sensibilities, and also to kind of traditional winemaking techniques of the area. So we'll have fun kind of walking through these four wines today. And to get you started, I'm gonna chat about our first wine today, which is the um, 2020 Ex Morose or Chateau de Chant, Terre de Brazé, um, which is a Samor Blanc. So it's coming from Samor, which is in the heart of France's Loire Valley. Um, this is a property, Chateau de Champ, which is in the heart of the appellation of Samour Champigny, um, which is perched high above the Loire River, and it's um, just to the west of the appellation of Chinon. Um, it's the um, Chateau itself is a, a beautiful mid-century, um, 17th century mansion, and it's most well known for um, planting grapes, uh, Chenin Blanc grapes and Cabernet Blanc grapes. Um, but also well known for a specific type of soil, which is classic to the area called Tufo soil, which is a limestone based soil. Um, the cellar master Jean Philippe um, is highly regarded and he also employs the help of a wonderful man, man named Philippe Gilbert, who's known for um, working plots in the area of Menetou Salon, which is closer to Sancerre in the east. Um, so they kind of um, tag team together to make some of these beautiful wines. Um, while these Tufo soils um, make really beautiful Chenin Blanc with vigorous acidity and really gorgeous precision, this is kind of a second label to Chateau de Chant. I'll show it to you again, Ex Morose, um, which is a kind of more entry level label of the property that focuses on um, 40 plus year old old vines. And they focus on vines that are in the village of Brezé, which is um, one of the top village sites in some more for Chenin Blanc production. Um, not only do the wines of Ex Moros come from these um, old vine, Chenin Blanc kind of um, production areas, but they also too come from different soils. Um, they're argile based soils, which are more clay based than the limestone based tufo. And they give you a little bit more richness um, and a little bit more um, depth and complexity to the wines. Um, so a different kind of iteration. Um, this wine is aged uh, on the leaves for several months in stainless steel before release. And on the nose and palate too, it definitely reflects a lot of those beautiful, brilliant orange citrus fruits um, with a lot of that kind of orange zest on the palate and that gorgeous acidity, but still great texture um, that Chenin Blanc's really well known for. While you could totally have this wine with a kind of variety of um, uh, white fish dishes or could do it with a um, goat cheese dish as well. I would actually recommend doing it with a fish taco recipe, um, which you can check out um, in your crew box insert um, by Bon Appetit. Uh, it's grilled fish tacos, so I thought it would just be a nice kind of way to spice up your uh, taco Tuesday. Um, but I think you'll really enjoy the pairing together. Uh, Chenin Blanc is, as always, one of my favorite grape bridles for white wine grapes and uh, some more in the town of Breze is one of the best reflections of this specific varietal. Next, we'll move on um, to our second wine, which is the 2016 Ducropio Don Juva Chiro Classico Superiore, which is a wine coming from Calabria. 
in the uh, most southern part of um, Italy. Think about it as the toe of the boot if we're looking at Italy as being a heel. And this is actually an interesting property because Neil Rosenthal um, really hadn't worked with any properties in Calabria before, and he didn't work as much with any properties in the southern part of Italy. For a long period of time, the southern part of Italy was kind of known for where a lot of the bulk wine production took place. So it wasn't always thought of um, in terms of high caliber when you um, kind of compared it to some of the more classic areas like Piemonte or Toscana. Um, it definitely um, didn't always kind of play a, as much of a role. Um, but Neil had actually tasted some of the wines from the De Cropia estate when he was at a dinner in Rome. And he was so um, kind of entranced with some of the wines that he ended up um, going down to visit the producer. De Cropio is owned by the proprietor, Giuseppe Ippolito. And the estate is in a town called Ciro Marina um, in Calabria. Even though Calabria is at the toe of the boot, it actually is on the um, eastern side of Calabria. So it actually kind of um, is on more of the um, uh, Ionian Sea side, which faces Greece. So it's an area that's known for um, grape varietals, which are distinctively Italian, but actually originated from Greece back in the day. Um, the town of Ciro Marina um, is known for these local grapes. And those grapes are um, known as grapes such as Galeopo, Malvasia Nero, and Gracco Nero. In um, dialect too, De Cropio um, means doctor of agronomy. And it reflects the fact that the Ippolito family has long been involved in grape growing in the area. And their estate itself um, encompasses about 30 hectares, um, eight of which are um, inland. And then the majority are tucked into the hillsides outside of the town of Chiro. Um, in some of those um, sites, the hillside sites tend to be some of the best. While they do um, sell a majority of their grapes, they actually keep um, a percentage of the best grapes to be vinified at the estate and sold as the Ducropio wines. The wine that we have from Ducropio today, um, their Don Giuba, uh, is a Ciro Rosso Classico Superiore, um, which is uh, primarily fermented in stainless steel and then racked to large oak. Um, before being released. They actually also um, age and bottle for about 18 months before releasing the wines to the market. And this wine comes exclusively from the Galeopo grape. Um, once in a while, there will be a small percentage of Nero that finds its way to the, to the blend. But what Don Juba is really able to capture is the power of this dark skin grape, um, which they actually make extremely fresh and bright and, and feel lighter than maybe you would think a wine would be from Southern Italy. Um, you definitely get like a little bit of that kind of hint of like bitter cherry and a little bit more of those kind of integrations of some of those um, kind of North African, um, Middle Eastern spices that come through and some ripeness, but at the same time balance at the end of the day. Um, what I think Neil Rosenthal was really impressed with is the fact that um, a lot of the wines that he would experience from Southern Italy would tend to be more overripe. So the elegance and the complexity of these wines were just really stunning to him. And they've been pretty stunning to us too. Um, something that's definitely unexpected. For those of you too who haven't experienced wines from Chiro before, once again, Chiro is the village. It's a, a DOC. Um, which is part of Calabria and probably their best known area for red wine production, though they do um, also produce whites, um, babiancos and rosatos from the area as well. Um, for Ciro Rosso, it has to be a minimum 80% Galeopo, and then you can blend other varietals into the blend as well. And you have your straight um, Ciro Rosso. Um, then what we have here is the Ciro Classico Superiore, Superiori means it has to be a minimum 13.5% alcohol percentage, so a little higher quality. And then if you go one step up, you have your um, Chiro Rosso Reserva or Chiro Rosso Reserva Superiore, which um, tends to have a minimum maturation of at least two years before release. So definitely something really fun to explore and discover, and I hope you all enjoy it very much. Um, I have this paired with a um, pasta dish, a spaghetti with duja, um, which is a like sausage from kind of the area with fennels and olives, which I thought would be really fun. Um, a little bit more of a rustic wine paired with a rustic dish. Um, I always love to kind of experiment with some recipes that are a little more traditional to the area. So I hope you enjoy it. Um, and 
bon, bon appetito for that, for sure. Um, for our third one, we have the 2018 Domaine Roland, Bourgogne à Côte, um, Côte de Bon, which is coming from the Bone um, Summer region in Burgundy, and it's 100% Pinot Noir. Um, this is a wine kind of from a producer that we love to work with at Gordon's. We love our Burgundy very much. And Domaine Roland has been kind of a classic to the Neil Rosenthal portfolio. They started working with Maurice Roland in around the early 80s. And um, shortly after that, his son Remy joined the family enterprise. And now, and ever since 2003, Remy's son Simon um, has come on to join as the fourth generation in your own. Um, in the present state, the Romain domain, or the Roland domain covers about 12 hectares of vineyards, um, eight of which are owned and four of which are rented. And they spread throughout some of the different communes in the um, Côte de Bonne, such as Bernard Bergelès, Savigny Le Bon, um, Echevron, Alex Corton, and Chory Le Bon. Um, and the estate producers uh, produces approximately 60,000 bottles a year which is amazing, across about 14 different appellations. Um, while they're not certified organic, their vineyard work is very close to organic in all ways. Um, they're always trying to use and minimize anything that's not completely natural in the vineyards. And the reds are um, hand sorted in both the vineyard and in the cellar before being pressed. They use a long maceration and elevation, uh, elevage in small barrel. And then um, in almost every instance, uh, neither the red neither red wines or the white wines are ever refined or filtered just so you get kind of those classic characteristics. Um, the Roland family has definitely um, really most particularly um, been mo most well known for some of their wonderful wines from Pernod Bergelès. And so this Haute Côte de Bonne um, Rouge is wonderful because it comes mostly from vineyards in Pernod Bergelès and then uh, a couple hectares in a Chevron as well. And it really captures the essence of Cote de Bone with some of those red cherry um, characteristics and really gorgeous floral uh, integrations. Um, but it's also just somewhat smaller production too, only around 3,600 um, bottles per year. So definitely something fun to try. I thought it might be um, cool for a pairing to do something vegetarian and um, as an uh, alternative to beef bourguignon. I chose a mushroom bourguignon um, as we're still in the cold weather a little bit, hopefully for the next month or so. Um, it might be kind of a cozy dish to try together um, from a great New York Times recipe. So I hope that you enjoy that. We're on to our last wine, if you can believe it, which is the um, 2019 uh, Clos Petit Corbon, which is coming from the producer Chateau Ossigot, um, which is in the Saint Emilion Grand Cru, um, 2019 vintage. This is um, a wine that's once again owned by um, Chateau Haute-Segat, owned and operated by Danielle Meunier. Um, Madame Meunier is uh, what Neil Rosenthal's uh, portfolio calls a vigneron extraordinaire, as she's the fourth generation of her family to oversee this nine hectare estate, which is right in the heart of the saint Emilion Grand Cru Appellation. Um, she took the reins of production in 1972 and she owns nine hectares of, um, in Chateau Atzigat, and she's right next to Chateau Cheval Blanc, um, one of the most famous vineyard sites. The vineyards are planted mostly around 60% to, to Merlot, with um, varying percentages around 30-ish percent Cabernet Franc and 5% Cabernet Sauvignon. And they produce around 30,000 to 40,000 bottles a year. Um, Madame Meunier is known for being um, extremely organized, and she actually has a lot of her um, members of the, uh, our vineyard workers are known as her master gardeners. It's just kind of a different way that she looks at farming the vineyards, um, something kind of quite interesting too. And her wines are just always capturing kind of the essence of artisanal craftsmanship. For the 2019 Clos Petit Corbon, um, Saint Emilion Grand Cru, this is the estate's second wine to the Chateau at Segat. So, always a great way, way to find value in Bordeaux, as sometimes that can be something hard to find. Um, this is just a great way um, to kind of create a more supple, um, kind of more uh, delicate style, I guess, of Merlot. Um, sometimes Merlot can be really thought of as really brash, bold, fruit forward. Um, 
when you definitely see Merlot um, in Bordeaux, especially on the right bank of Bordeaux, that's treated um, where it's actually really focused on the terroir, you definitely see it come alive and um, strike just this amazing balance where it's not a uh, caricature with voluptuousness and pumped up and really intense, but it just has this lip smacking red fruit and just real balance, depth, acidity, um, and just real elegance, but still more that medium to full body characteristic. So a really noble version of Merlot, which is kind of um, Merlot in its truest self, which a lot of um, estates from saint Emilion would appreciate for sure. Um, we decided to pair this with a um, steak bordelaise, um, which is a recipe from Savour magazine that we found. So we thought this would be a beautiful counterpart, um, but I hope that you all enjoy this. It's a really gorgeous um, example of Merlot in its, in its truest form. I hope um, you get to experience uh, these four wines this month with family and friends. Um, hope you have a good meal that surrounds it as well and get to really kind of um, revisit the classics again through the lens of Neil Rosenthal. And um, for those of you who are available, please join me at the end of the month for an in-person tasting. For those that are not available to do so, you can always reach out to me with any questions um, just by shooting me an email. I hope that you enjoy all these wines and enjoy the month of March. And I look forward to um, showcasing more wines in April with you. Thank you so much and enjoy the rest of the month. Bye.